So over the last year since I started this channel, I've talked a lot about browsers. And those of you who have followed me through this time period know that I've switched between browsers many, many times. Like, I almost change browsers more than I rice my window manager. Like, it's not quite true, but it could be true. Because everybody knows I've made, like, dozens of videos at this point about web browsers and Firefox and Brave and Vivaldi and like you name it I've made a topic about it and I'm honestly I'm tired like I'm tired of making content about web browsers because let's be honest there aren't any good ones like the, every single web browser out there has some serious flaws whether that flaw is that it doesn't render the web well it doesn't block ads very good it doesn't have certain features it has way too many features it's owned by google it's owned by microsoft i mean every single web browser has some flaws so there's not a perfect one out there and maybe asking for a perfect web browser is asking entirely too much and i think it is no software on the face of the planet is perfect but i don't think it's too much to ask for a good web browser there are some good web browsers out there firefox is good cute browser is good brave it pains me to say it, but it's good. I'm not going to say Vivaldi's good. I, I, I can't go that far. They just put way too much crap in their browser to even really qualify as a browser any, anymore. Uh, and I'm not going to talk about the Google browsers, even though they could be considered good if you can force yourself to use them. My point is, is that we have many good browsers, but the browser space feels static. It feels like it's not moving forward. It feels like things aren't getting better. Like we've reached the pinnacle of good, or as the way I should say, we've reached the pinnacle of meh. You know, it's, it's as far as they feel like they can take the web browser. And now it's just about maintaining the status quo. And I don't think that that is good for technology and I think one of the reasons why we're at this point is because we have no real competition in the browser space. We have Google Chrome. 85% or whatever the number is of people on the planet who use a computer and use a web browser use Google Chrome. It's a sad fact of life. And Mozilla, our only hope in this quest, as sad as that is to say, doesn't seem to be capable of maintaining users anymore i was trying to think of a good way to say it but they're 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 hemorrhaging users really bad like they've lost like 50 million users or something in the last three years or some insane number like, it, like it's a lot so firefox as much as we wish it was the answer to more competition it really is not uh, the, whether that's because the browser is not good enough or because the organization behind Firefox is uh, you know, atrocious. The answer is up for debate. So the question is, why can't we have more browsers? And the answer is, making a browser is fucking hard. It's really hard. Now, I'm not a developer. I've constantly said that on this channel. Everybody knows that like, if you've watched some of my scripting videos, I can barely do bash. Like, I can do bash scripts, but they're really bad. I can hear TFL off in the, in the, in the, in, in the peanut gallery saying, yeah, yeah, he doesn't know how to do bat bash. That's a good, that's an easy statement to make. <laughs> At least when you compare it to TFL stuff. But the point is, I'm not a developer, but even I know that making a browser is fucking hard. And that's the reason why we don't have more web engines. If you want to make a web engine, you have to have millions and millions of dollars and hundreds of developers putting effort into it. And making an open source web engine is damn near impossible when those are the things that you need to do it. The only company that we could possibly, or I guess the only two companies I, I could say could actually do this are Canonical and Red Hat. And the question then becomes, why haven't they? Like, why haven't they? And, and the, I think the reason is, is because even for the, those companies, when they make millions of dollars and have, you know, hundreds of developers, I think even they would find it way too hard, maybe even impossible to do what we need done. And I think that at the end of the day, there is no real solution. And that is just kind of heartbreaking because the web is our 
number one tool in the world. The internet is the thing that runs the world these days. Like, without the internet, we wouldn't have YouTube. We wouldn't have any number of pleasures that we see every single day. We wouldn't have a lot of the the, the infrastructure we have for more important things that run the fabric of civilized worlds. You know, it's just not... It's become so entrenched into society, and it's controlled by one company, basically. Like, the web is controlled, like it or not, by Google. And we don't have a solution for it. We just don't. So, when I started this video, I was going to put forth the question, why can't we have more web browsers? And that is a good question. Why can't we? And the question, the answer is, is because it's too hard and too resource intensive for anybody to really take up. Uh, any alternative web engine that pops up is usually so small and the task so large that it goes under almost immediately. So what we need is an open source forward company, looking at you Canonical, looking at you Red Hat, who's interested in taking on this problem. It would be phenomenal for them to do so. Whether or not they would, I, I like I said before, I don't think that they would. The problem's too hard. Canonical seems to be very buddy-buddy with Google a lot of the times, so I don't think that they even think that it's a problem. Maybe I'm wrong on that. I mean, I know that they tend to partner on a lot of stuff, so the, the optics there can sometimes seem that they're much closer to Google than they maybe should be, but whether that's a whole other argument. And then we have Red Hat, which is owned by IBM, and they aren't interested at all really in the desktop market like they're, they're just not and i'm talking more about ibm like they didn't buy red hat because fedora exists you know they just they didn't they bought it because the red hat makes millions of dollars serving enterprise customers that's where they make their money and that's where they'll continue to put their focus and creating a web browser or a web engine doesn't do anything for that market at least it does very little so the two companies that could be our saviors in, in this space i don't think have the motivation to do it and that makes me sad so the question becomes is there anyone else like is there any other company out there that could come forward and even if they created a, a web engine that is proprietary and the answer to that question is apple I mean, Apple has WebKit, like they, they've created WebKit, but nobody uses Safari unless it's on their iPhone. Uh, and they don't, and Apple doesn't seem to be at all interested in propagating Safari further into the market. Like they don't, it's a, it's a web browser on their Macs. They make hardware. Okay. They make hardware. That's where they make their money making in a new web engine or propagating the web engine that they have into the further into the market doesn't seem that they're all that interested in doing. They have Safari for Windows. They've had for years. It is the worst browser you'll ever try. It is so bad. And I would challenge the idea that anyone really uses it unless they absolutely have to. So Apple's not an option. <laughs> I mean, I just giggle at the thought of Facebook doing it. <laughs> I, I mean, even it, it'd be hilarious if they did, because we still wouldn't want to use it because it was made by Facebook. So uh, it'd be hilarious if we got our wish, a third web engine that was popular, but it was made by Facebook, so the open source community can actually support it. Um, <laughs> so that's, that's, a, that's a problem as well. So we could just keep going through the multi-trillion dollar companies. Amazon? Do we want to use an Amazon browser? I mean, that's the problem. Is like the only two companies that would actually want to do this, that would actually do a good job and would have the ability to maybe make it open source and make at least make it open source friendly, IBM and Canonical, just don't have the motivation or the resources to do it. So, uh, And then you can name any other company. I mean, those are the two... I mean, OpenSUSE. I mean, I, I again, they have the same kind of problem that Red Hat does, is that they focus on the server area and not so much on the desktop area. They have a, a really good desktop, but very few people use OpenSUSE as their daily driver in, in comparison to using Ubuntu or Fedora. So they don't have the motivation either. And they're like the third largest open source company. After that, 
it falls way down, right? Now, the question then becomes, what about something like the Linux Foundation or one of those open source foundations that make a lot of money? So like the, I saw an article a couple days ago, the Linux, I think it was the Linux Foundation. I may be, I may be misremembering the name, but one of those organizations made like 72 or $172 million. Like it was like a, a shit ton of money. They could put some of that towards a browser and it would solve one of the biggest problems the world is probably going to face in the next five years, which is a Google monopoly over the web, which is already here. The impact of that monopoly isn't, hasn't really shown its face yet. And it's going to, because, well, I mean, we already are, we already are seeing the impacts of it. It's killing Firefox. Like Firefox has so many problems rendering the web. I mean, I know a lot of people, every time I say Firefox has problems rendering one page, web pages, I have several people come to me. Like, I've never seen this. Well, I mean, I see it at least three times a day. Like Patreon does not work well in Firefox. It doesn't. There's several problems with Patreon going in the in the back end that just it just won't won't render. Uh, YouTube itself has problems rendering in Firefox. It adds extra spaces to all the descriptions. Like that's a thing that it does. Now it's not a big deal, but it happens. Like there's these little things. Like a lot of the times like my bank won't render in Firefox at all. Like it looks weird. <laughs> like uh, buttons are in the wrong places that you can just tell that whoever designed that website didn't test it in Firefox. And that's the point. That's what we're seeing is that develop web developers aren't testing their websites in Firefox. They have no reason to because comparatively speaking, nobody uses Firefox. So we are seeing the impact of the monopoly that already exists, but it's going to get worse. Google is not a moral company. We know this. They used to be do no evil. That's that used to be their model. And they used to do a fairly good job of not being evil. I'm not going to say they were perfect. They were not perfect. They did evil things. But since they removed that model, they now seem to do whatever the hell they want to do, no matter whether it be considered evil or not. And eventually, they will start taking advantage of their monopoly over the web if they haven't already, and I think they have in some places. And that's not good for anybody, whether you use Linux or open source software or not. It's just, it's not. So uh, we need help. We need to find somebody out there that has the resources and motivation to fix this problem. So uh, that's it for this video. I could continue on for a little while longer, but I think I've probably said enough. So in the comment section below, if you have an idea for a company that would be interested in doing this, maybe we can petition them to do so. If you have any other comments, you can also leave those in the comment section below. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the like button. I really do appreciate everybody who has already done that. You can follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2 is fun too. Patrick L. Primus, Sid A, Marcus, Meglin, Jackson, M. Tool, Steve A, Mitchell, Art Center, Amateus, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, J Dog, the BSDs, Rock, Peter A, Crucible. On one breath. <laughs> Thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you next time.